welcome back for day two of our sew along. Now, once you have your pattern and your fabric all ready to go, the first thing you're going to do is take your what are now what we'll now call our collars off the pattern pieces, and you're going to start by sewing the shoulder seams, the shoulder seams of both the collar and the collar lining, which are actually the same piece. After that, press your seams open and then put them together front to the front, back to the back, and start pinning. And you do need to pin. If you don't pin, it will shift. So at least pin every inch or so. And we will pause and let you do that, and then we'll come back when it's time to stitch. Okay, now that you have your collar pinned all the way around the outside edges, you're going to sew, and these are quarter inch seam allowances. So either use a quarter inch foot or use the edge of your foot. That's usually pretty close to a quarter of an inch, and you're gonna sew all the way around the collar. So, now that we've done that, clip your threads and then trim your seam from a quarter, quarter of an inch down to an eighth of an inch, all the way around. My hands look like my mother's. Is there a way that you can fix that? <laughs> you know, over half the people out there relate to what I just said. Thought I was in.
Now we're going to flip this and turn it right side out. And what you might want to try to do before you completely put wrong sides together is kind of press that seam and then we'll press it again once we complete turning it and put the wrong sides together. I think you'll get a smoother finish if you do that. Okay, I think that should do it. So now, go along this outer edge where you can feel that 1 8 inch seam allowance that you left. And just with your fingers, roll the edge so that you get a nice finish. And do that all the way around. Give it another press. And then you'll be ready to lay your collar aside for now. So, the next thing we're going to do is um, you will need your baby interfacing and you need to cut two strips the width of your bodice and two strips the width of your shoulders. So, I've already fused the uh, interfacing on that bodice. And so, I'm going to do this one. Always check and be sure that the rough side is down so that you don't fuse the interfacing to your iron. And then it's best just to press and hold and not move your iron like you would if you were ironing a piece of fabric or garment. What this does is it stabilizes um, that bottom edge of the bodice so that when you are pinning your skirt on, um, you won't get a ripply effect from the, the bodice stretching as you sew the skirt on. So it really is a good thing to do. Now you only need it, that a little bit long, you only need it on either your front or your back shoulders because when your shoulders are sewn together, then that keeps the shoulder seam from stretching. that. Okay, so now we're ready to put right sides together and sew the shoulder seams. I don't even think I'm going to pin this. So, if you have a serger, this would be the time that you would serge these seams to finish them. But, if you don't have a serger, no worries. Um, knit is not going to fray. You might want to just take your scissors and clean up your um, little seam allowance a little bit. 
and you can just leave it. Some machines, some sewing machines have um, some stitches that mimic a serger, and you can do that. I like using just three threads when um, when I'm uh, finishing seams. Um, it just makes for a, a smaller, a little smaller finish. Okay, now we're ready to put our collar on. And we're going to change our stitch a little bit at this point. Right Up till this point, we've just been using a regular straight stitch, 2.5 for the length, um, because we have not been sewing anything that really is going to get a lot of stress. So even the shoulders, because of the, the, um, because of the interfacing there, you really didn't need to use anything but a straight stitch there. But now we need to change the, our, uh, our machine to a zigzag, but just a really small zigzag. I like using, um, do that again. Um, I like using 1.5 for the stitch uh, width, and then um, about two for the length. And that can vary a little bit with your machine, so just test it um, on a scrap first. And what you would do is take two pieces of fabric together and stitch a line, and then pull and see if when it stretches, it none of the, the none of the threads break. But that's what I set mine on. Make sure you put the front with the front and the back with the back. And you'll be matching the shoulder seams of the collar. The shoulder seams of the bodice. Okay, one more thing I almost forgot. Um, there's a tab in the middle, and that's what scrunches it up to make it look like a collar, is this little tab. And you'll look on your chart, and your chart will tell you what size strip to cut. I think this one was two and a half by three and a half. And just fold it lengthwise, right sides together, and stitch across one end. And down the long side of the raw edges. Okay, I'm going to trim that a little bit, clip it at the corner, and now what we're going to do is um, you'll need some kind of point turner. This is called a stuff it, um, but there are all kinds of point turners out there. I prefer the kind that do have a rounded tip on them though because I tend to push too hard. Give that a little press. Doesn't really matter what this end looks like that is sewn there because it's going to get cut off. It just makes it easier to turn a little tube like that if you um, go ahead and sew one end. Okay, the next step is to mark your center front of your collar and take your little tab and scrunch it up so that you get what looks like the collar. and then the extra part of your little tab, you can now cut off. Okay. 
Okay? So, once you've done that, you're going to put your collar to the wrong side of your neckline in the center front. I think I have a pin in there. So, the inside neckline is going to look like that. So now I'm just going to keep pinning, matching the shoulder seams. You will press your shoulder seam of your bodice toward the back. I'm just going to go ahead and match the other shoulder seam. And keep pinning, keeping your edges of your collar and the edges of your neckline as close together as you can. Okay, just a few more pins and we'll be ready to sew. All right, and again, a quarter inch seam. I'm right here at the center front right now. Let me make sure I don't get my little tab. Get any kind of pucker as I go over that part. That is pretty thick right there. Now, you, if you have a serger, you could serge this seam. Um, no one's ever going to see it. So, I'm just trimming to about an eighth of an inch from your zigzag stitch.
Now you're going to flip your collar to the right side of your bodice. I've got my pins here. Clean up my mess. And press. And I like to press from the inside right along that neck edge so that I can see just a little bit of the collar. That way I know it's not going to show. the outside. If I were using my regular iron at home, I would actually be giving it some bursts of steam. So now you have a facing that's been turned into a collar, like that.